Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching my cat tutorial on YouTube today. Here I will show you a little uh, tuxedo cat uh, painting video, wet on wet technique. So this cat is our cat and I have several photos of him. So I generated um, similar from the same cat a similar um, tutoring video for Skillshare 2 if you are interested. So how I started is um, just using a very neutral color. It's gray but you can use anything you have just light and neutral color watercolor pencil and make an outline. It's help you with the painting where to put the black uh, paint the whole painting contains only lamp back, black watercolor paint, artist quality. I usually use Horadam or Daniel Smith, but I'm sure any artist quality lamp black paint will make it. So um, uh, the paper is Kilimanjaro, which is a great alternative to Arch or Arches. It's uh, maybe cheaper I bought years ago so please check it out although if you use arch or arches you can use the 140 uh, sorry 160 LB paper which I am suggest over the thicker one so I tested both I think it's better to work on the 140 than a 300 but from uh, uh, from Kilimanjaro I use the 300 and I again tested both the 300 and 160 and from Kilimanjaro I would buy the thicker if I can afford or if you can afford but uh, the thinner will work it's just a little bit more uh, buckling not too much more but it's buckling more but I think it's fine both uh, but uh, so that's the unfortunate route from Arch thinner is better, but from Kilimanjaro the thicker and thicker usually more expensive. So I'm not sure it's worth to buy the Kilimanjaro. Anyway, this is a Kilimanjaro 300 LB, full sheet, 22 by 30 inches. And I really suggest to use the large size. I like to paint on large size, but it's absolutely not why I'm suggesting. If you doubt me, go to my uh, video, YouTube video about why to use the larger paper. I will explain why it is important. And actually, you believe or not, many people, oh, I'm so afraid to paint on a large one. Uh, they think it's more difficult, but it's not actually so much easier to paint with watercolor in large size because it's flowing and you just have more space to work it it's so much easier just believe me you will have so much better result if you're not trying to paint this in small so you can go a little bit smaller but please uh, maybe you can go like 24 by um 24, 18 by 24 inches, which is the block size. I suggest that if you want to go smaller, uh, but uh, I, I think it's good to get the full sheet paper. So uh, after you outline with a pencil, that's only need if you are uh, not a confident uh, uh, draw, drawing uh, person. So if you are confident in your drawing skill, you can go directly with the paint. So it's not necessary to do the outline. Uh, and then I used a little bit of the masking fluid, very tiny bit, just one line on the ear, not necessary. So it's on you if you want to use, use when the paper is dry and uh, make sure before you start to paint, the masking fluid is completely dry. Don't try to wet the paper when the masking fluid is not completely dry. So that's an important thing. So my masking fluid is uh, this blue, I bought at Blick, um, PBO drawing gum. And I use a chopstick where I 
which I uh, made pointier with a blade. Just a plain chopstick. <laughs> so usually I make a line on my side paper to see how thick is it. Just I just did this one line, not necessary. If you have no drying gum at home, don't buy it. Don't, it's not, not important. Um, if you have drawing gum, maybe you can draw both ear. It just help the ear stay sharp later. Yeah, whatever you prefer. Uh, if you paint the ear later when your paper, because it's a wet on wet technique, we're starting very wet, with very wet paper, which I'm doing right now. So I spray bottle it. So anyway, uh, if you can wait and not impatient, just paint the ear and the sharper areas a little bit later when the paper is not as wet anymore because it will spread. And you don't want, you want spread in a body where it's fluffy, but you don't want spread on the legs, like at least on the pulp area and the ear and the face because it's sharp. So you want to keep this contrast and to keep this contrast, you need to wait until uh, the paper dry with the sharper area. So then I use this big no-name brush to equalize the water puddles. I, I add more water from my water bowls. You can see I'm using very big water bowls with clean water um, and the water bowls are white or transparent so I can see how there is my water. I suggest to have honestly three, four around you but two is a minimum. And make sure one is always clean. One is always clean because sometimes you just suddenly need clean water and if you don't have it, it's bad. And uh, so have those many large water bowl. Uh, I have this big brush, big flat brush from uh, a, a store, an art store where the Asian section had it. It has no brand label. I have no idea. I have them for like 10 years. Probably they are completely rusty, but I bought fancy, <clears throat> fancy, it's called Motler. Uh, I, I bought fancy Motlers, but I still prefer this one. But if you don't find it, it's fine. Just buy some kind of big flat brush for watercolor and not too pricey. I, that's my suggestion. This will be very useful for both painting and wetting your paper. So I'm using Lamp Black Artist Quality Watercolor Forum Tube. It's, in, it's kind of important. I'm using a big brush. It's much harder to work from pens or half pens. So I really think it's a good idea to have a tube bl a lamp black and a little ceramic or plastic dish. Ceramic is better. In this case, you can use any color because you know it's we only using black paint. But if we would paint color, I would suggest white ceramic dish or a white kitchen plate, something like that. But uh, now, just uh, any kind of little dish, uh, dilute up about two inch paint to a heavy cream consistency. So it's leaking, much leakier than a tube, but it's dense like heavy cream. So something like that, dilute up with a tiny bit of water and just uh, with, a, with your brush. You mix it for a few minutes, make sure no clumps in your brush and you can start to paint with that creamy black liquid. So I put up the, the big areas uh, right away um, until the paper is really wet. So when you wet your paper, you can wait a minute or two just to make sure that so when you start to wet the paper, it's just on a surface and you need a little time, but not more than a minute or two until this wetness go inside the paper. It's still shiny. It's still very wet, but just let give a little time to the, to the water to sink a little bit deeper than just sinking on a first, uh, just, uh, sorry, just swimming on a surface. So, so then you start to paint and you can see it's furring out beautifully. So, when your paint is the right consistency and uh, and the water and the paper wetness is good, the paint just furring out and it's really give you this cat body, fluffy, furry texture. Um, so that's when you want to add those big black blobs everywhere. 
So if you don't know me, um, I have I started this video making only uh, at uh, end of December, the last few days of December. I'm very beginner, but I started. I did the whole thing. I started to put videos on Skillshare, and uh, I really would like if you check out my Skillshare videos. I posted one video a week every single week since then. Several of them, actually most of them are cat painting video, all very different, black cat, uh, calico cat, all kind of cat. And I have one other than cat. Uh, and uh, in ski on Skillshare, uh, if you use my referral link, which I will place in the, in the text below this video, it's give me advantage. It's give me ten dollar per person if I bring a new student, and I would really appreciate that. And on Skillshare, when you sign up and you give your credit card information, you still have two weeks without your card being charged. So you have two weeks to paint and try and test any video you like, and and you still can cancel. And it's. So it's, it will be free for you if you don't like it. If you like it, it's still just, if you pay the whole re year, it's about $10. Uh, I don't know exactly, but approximately $10 a month. Uh, if you pay in monthly basis, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's not very expensive. And I am trying to post one video a week. So if you want more these cat paintings, please sign up to Skillshare and use my referral link. So I, uh, I using a lot of wiping for wiping. If you want to see my tools and materials, I detail everything on a video about tools and materials, but, uh, I'm just trying to introduce here because I'm not making a separate video on this. So, uh, I'm using Kim wipes, which is a specially made, uh, wipe. It's not leaving uh, particles. And uh, it's kind of pricey, so I understand if you don't want to buy that. But um, I think kitchen towel, kitchen paper towel would be a good alternative. Don't try to use like toilet paper or tissue paper because they're really thin and they fall apart. And actually toilet paper is designed to fall apart. So, so you don't want thing which is falling apart and sticking to your wet watercolor. That would be, I honestly think it would be hell. So my best guess is, is a kitchen paper towel for wiping. I use a lot of wiping. I think I'm overdoing it. Actually, I have to admit with this painting, there is a point I like it more than on the end. And it, the result is it's, I overdid a little bit. So with watercolor, it's, I think most people struggle with stopping. So overdoing it is much more common than, than not going further enough. So this is a little bit tricky to know when to stop. And uh, I will let you know when I like it the more and I let you know when I overdid, I think so. Uh, you can stop earlier, way earlier, like halfway, if you like your painting and you just want to keep it that way. But if you want to learn more, you can do crazy stuff like I am doing and maybe you will destroy your painting, but I promise you will learn a lot. Because with watercolor, what is happening in the minute you're doing is not the final result. It will change a lot, a lot. So when you put down a paint or you put down water puddles or you're wiping off stuff, it's not staying like that. You need to predict for many minutes in, in advance. And sometimes it's few minutes, sometimes it's even half an hour. It still will change. And until it's get uh, like very, it's not entirely dry, but let's say when you don't see shiny part, until you reach that point, it still will change. It will change. The, the paint will move in, in inside the paper. So actually it's, it's, it's a prediction skill. Uh, you, you will learn that only with experience. And it's different for every paper, every paint, uh, every humidity level in your room, etc. So, but you will feel it. It's not like you will know it like 
uh, like a like a table but you will feel it you will know what will happen when you do it a lot so you either go with me and and try to do a lot of crazy stuff on the end or you just like it and you stop it's your choice i i don't know what to suggest um so I'm putting the ear and I know already it's a little bit too early. It will fur out. And as I said, I think it's a good thing to, to, to contrast the fluffy body and tail to the sharp head, ear and paws. So you, you do the later those areas, it's better. So it's, it's worth to wait with those areas. Uh, otherwise, you have to when it's furring out too much, you have to wipe them several times probably so you will see um, uh, it's all all a long learning process it's it, it's not going right away right I, I I'm doing this for many years now and still surprise happens all the time also with the crazy stuff when you dump water and things like that later it can generate beautiful things but it's just hard to predict and it's not like you're doing it and you hope for the best. With experience, you will understand much more like how much water to dump or where, and you can predict. But in the beginning, it's more like uh, gambling. So it's either destroying your paint or make it better and you never know. And later, you will have a, a, a better prediction skill regarding that. So you can see it's furring out and I have to wipe it. When you wipe, it's important to always make sure your paper, uh, you're using a clean side of your paper, easy to make mess with a dirty wipe. Uh, and it will happen, I will, <laughs> you will see. And then you have to remove the, the mess you generate with the wipe. So it's just better to take care that turning the paper towel always. Um, to the side when it where it's clean and change it frequently when it get dirty everywhere so yeah i i i put the ear a little bit early but it's fine it's it's not a big mistake it just you need to like keep eye on it and to, to make sure you you not let it overflow and dry because when it dry then it's kind of almost not possible to and it's, it's possible to lighten it up, but to remove it not. So, and it depends on the paper. Some paper stain much more and some paper it's easier to lift. But this one, this Kilimanjaro is not good for lifting that much. So you can lift some, but not great. So you can see I paint a, a, a shadow below the cat. Compared to that, the feet are lighter, whiter. So I keep wiping them to, to, to just keep the feet area dry and paint not flowing there. And it's a good expression uh, of the legs. So it's, it's a good way to, to use the paper white and some dirty brush color, grayish, to, to make some shading on a leg. So. And if you, you can see that point, it's almost, you can almost stop. So if you like it, I, I think it's a good idea to stop. But I didn't stop, so it's your choice. You want to go and try a lot of things. Um, I, I think it's really a, a good cat uh, already. And uh, as I said, uh, on the end, I, I'm not, I think I overdid. But I, I also, as I said before, you can learn a lot from overdoing. So both has advantage and disadvantage, honestly. So 
So I'm using dirty brush, just like very lightly dirty brush for white areas like the chest and the neck and a, and a face. Uh, it's better when a paper is not shiny anymore. And it's kind of at that point, but it's really depend on your room and paper and a lot of things. So it's, it's, you have to have a feeling about where is your paper regarding wetness. And I, unfortunately I can't help with it, but I promise after some, ex some trial and error, you will know, you will know it will fur out or, or stay, stay still. You will know it's, it's just, it's experience. And you see, I'm always watching for overflowing and I always removing when it's overflowing, even if it's on a head or anywhere, but I, uh, what I will do, and I'm doing right now, sometimes I sometimes add just water on the edges of the paint. And uh, so it, it can do two things. It's either, uh, it's depend on the level, how wet is your paint. If your paint is very wet, the paint will flow into that border you added as clean water. You can use that when you found, for example, not enough furry. You're not happy with the furriness of a structure. You can add just water and it will fur into that, into that uh, uh, wet zone. A especially if it's not furring, you need to add a little black paint on the edge of your original black paint. And it will fur into that new layer. If your paper is, oh sorry, if your paint is exactly in the middle of the drying process, so it's not shiny anymore, but if you would touch with your finger, you would, your finger would be black, so semi-dry paint, when you add water, it will uh, push back the paint. This technique called push back or wash back technique and what it causes, it's called cauliflower or blooming. It means that this, this clean water will wash the paint away and it generates a beautiful, uh, called cauliflower or blooming. It looks like a little bit like fur. So it's, it, you can generate furry effect. And I'm using that a lot later. Uh, and uh, I think I overdid in this painting, but it's a technique it's worth to learn because uh, for cat painting especially, but people use this all the time, watercolor artists use this all the time to to many things. So it's a good technique to, to know. And it's happening sometimes when you don't want to happen, when you have water on your, water puddle on your, on your semi-dry painting, it can generate and you don't want it and it's hard to remove it when you so it's something people hate or love and also it's depend on a thing so you can see i was unhappy with the furring out and i just add water on the bottom of the tail and uh, but again as i said it was beautiful what it did right away i'm removing the extra dirtiness with the brush the problem is the effect is not immediate so you see an immediate effect, but that's not how it will stay. It will change. And it probably will thicken the tail more than I want. So you will see how I deal with it. And the same on the neck. I wanted a little bit, so it was very sharp there. I am adding a little water and I'm hoping that it will smoothen up that very sharp edge. Uh, unfortunately, with watercolor, you always have to wait and then interfere um, because many times you just don't know your your current move, uh, how it will uh, work out in few minutes or, or 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 even longer time scale. So you always on a babysitting, you watch everything, and you kind of eventually have a good feeling where and when to interfere. So as I said, it's our cat and uh, I have several 
photo of, of him. And I have another uh, painting, uh, very similar to this one, but it, when it's not standing cat, it's a moving walking cat on that case. So it's on Skillshare. If you would like to try another one, please go to Skillshare, use my referral link. And uh, as I said, for the first two weeks, you can even do this free. Uh, and it's pretty cheap even after. So I think it's worth to check out. Actually, on that cat on Skillshare, I have a video about that. It's like a little advertisement on YouTube about that Skillshare video. And I'm showing on that painting, I dumped a lot of water on the end and it came out pretty good. So I'm happy I did it. Uh, so if you're interested in this, I put it in a bracket, watercolor accidents. It's not accident. You, you learn and you have some prediction capability when you learn, when you have a lot of experience. So I, I didn't do random that, but of course I'm not, I'm not perfect in this at all. So it can go both ways. But on that case, it went in a good way. I think here, I think I overdid. So um, yeah, uh, if, you, if you're curious, go to Skillshare and you can see the whole video. Uh, but there is this little introductory video on YouTube so you can see what I'm talking about if you just watch that one. So now because my paint is getting on that point when it's semi-dry I'm adding the water and that water doing this pushback technique I was talking about. Uh, it's pushback or washback technique and what it's causing it's cauliflower or blooming uh, you can, uh, you can, there are other people made video on YouTube on this. Uh, and I also did a video about this two technique I'm using a lot. So if you want, you can, you can check those out. Uh, I'm introducing, I'm not painting anything. I'm just showing the technique. So what I'm doing right now, it's different. It's lifting. So when you want to eliminate pain because you just don't want there, uh, loosen up with a clean brush, clean, clean, clean brush, clean water and wipe it off. That's the technique to lift if you don't want it. This is how you lift up paint. Some paper better, some paint and some paper is better for lifting. Uh, this is like middle eye, what I would say, the Kilimanjaro, the thicker one. Uh, the paint also, so when you have professional artist quality paint, it's label staining and it has a number, I think, or some kind of label, how staining is a color. It means how much you can uh, like lift it. I don't know what is on lamp black, honestly. <laughs> I don't know the number, um, but you can see you can lift, but you cannot lift for completely white paper. So. And I'm lifting now the tail again, because as I predicted, the tail became too thick. <clears throat> so what I'm doing, I'm lifting the bottom of, on the bottom of the tail. What I'm doing, my brush is clean, clean water, and I'm adding a lot of water, loosening up the paint, and then drying the brush and removing that dirty water. So I'm just using old paper towels, removing a lot of wetness, and I'm just sucking up with the brush the, those dirty water. So loosen up and I'm doing the same thing on a little bit on the butt area. And then I can use a, a clean. You see, that's when it's not clean. You just make a mess. So you again lift it, loosen up, wipe it off, either with brush or paper. So this is how you clean up uh, if you need to.
and you see how fast my water degrading so i always yeah it's good to have many many ball of water around you i think three four is not even too many <laughs> during a painting like this probably you need like five ten ball of water at least So I'm still lifting, I'm still lifting. So clean brush, clean water, loosening up, drying the brush and removing the, so yeah, or using paper towel. You can use dry brush or, or paper towel. How I dry my brush, it's either wiping on a paper next to me or just using old paper towel piles or like Kim wipe piles around me and just, uh, press it in within two and suck out the water and uh, then you can use it. So now I'm adding pigment on my brush and redraw the line on the bottom. Hopefully it will fur out a little bit but not too much because if it's too much I'm, I'm back in the original problem. <laughs> so. So I'm trying to generate a fur effect. So I add a little wetness and it's immediately furring out. But it's a balance because it's thickening the tail again. This is when your brush is not clean. <laughs> but if you just go back to clean water and you can wipe it. Since everything drying up, I add a little water here and there. When I add extra water to the paper, it's make sure your brush is clean, your water is clean. And you do it like just with one wipe of your brush, because otherwise you will loosen up everything. You will loosen up a little bit even this way, but it will still stay. But if you do it even twice, probably you will wash it off the, the, the paint there. This is not a very easy painting and I honestly overdid it for sure. Uh, but I think it's still very, very useful to, to try. And maybe you stop earlier. So watercolor tend to dry lighter and it's um, it's usually if the if the paint 
area is not so it's still wet you can add more pigment if you see it's it's too light if it's dry and you add the pigment it will generate borders where you add extra pigment but when it's wet as mine it's still uh, it won't have edges So I'm redoing the ear when it's drier, it's just better. At that point you can use thinner brush if you want, but it's not a big deal because a good watercolor brush always have a good point. So you can even use a thick brush to do similar points. So I'm also adding some like darkness, um, so lighter and darker black to express like 3D shape, like light and darker area within the black. So the ear, ear has these lighter zones. Actually, since I'm showing every move when I'm doing, I can imagine it's even more enjoyable if you just put the music uh, and just watch what I'm doing. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe it's useful if you're not very experienced with watercolor, maybe it's useful to, to hear what I'm saying. So regarding the brushes, I <clears throat> I almost need just three brushes, uh, but two would be enough. So one, this big one, uh, the Motler, uh, mine is a no name. And other than that, I use Princeton Aqua Elite or Princeton um, Princeton Neptune. Um, the Neptune is fluffy holding more water, the aqua elite is springier, more precise. If you can afford only one, any of them can be. Honestly, like uh, the only important thing, buy a round or a quill, just one of them, round or a quill. If you buy the quill, buy about size eight. If you buy the round, buy si around size 20. And if you can afford one more brush, uh, buy the one in my hand, which is a, around the size 8 round. Or if it would be a quill, it would be, I think, quill 0. But like a size 8, around the size 8 from normal round brush. And that's... Um, that's enough. So, But if you don't buy the thinner one, that's fine. Because you can use the tip of the, of the, the, the bigger round. So I added a lot of water on a semi-dry area, the white, I don't know, I would say ash, like ash uh, shape on a body and I'm doing it now too. This is generating this cauliflower or pushback or washback effect. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, 
when I'm adding just clean water on a semi-dry paint surface. And I know I told before, but semi-dry is important here. And semi-dry means that the paint is not shiny or just very little bit shiny, and, uh, but if you touch it, it still would paint your finger. That's when you can generate this blooming or cauliflower effect. So now the legs area pretty dry ahead to at least in my condition. <clears throat> uh, so you can add more if you want. You can add more exact lines here and there if you need to. It will stay more there. Like it won't fur out that much. If you want to add shades or shading on a white area, just use a dirty brush. <laughs> you can see on the back, middle of the back, this blooming or, or cauliflower devel developing very very beautifully but as I said it's always take time it's not it will take minutes to 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 develop you can see it's take time I'm adding water there on the bottom for the same reason I hope it will develop uh, I hope the, the the wetness of the paint is right and it will develop these cauliflowers But it's not happening if your paint is too dry or too wet. I have a video on this, so if you want to understand exactly this effect, uh, that video will talk about more. I went for clean water. So yeah, uh, several uh, water run is necessary when you water color if you don't have five, ten bowl of water around you. I'm adding again clean water for generating cauliflower. So you can see it develop beautiful on the back and on a on a belly, but not on the butt area. It was too dry.
so I'm lifting now <laughs> lifting paint with clean water clean brass let's loosen up the paint and then wipe off So, I always saying this with watercolor is just <laughs> uh, mostly overdoing. So I'm really close to finishing. I think I already overdid it. So, um, but I will finish up very soon. <laughs> it's just like you always see something and go back, but it's not always worth it. Sometimes, if it's necessary, yes, yeah, do it. But. Uh, yeah need to learn to stop it's hard and this is not an easy tutorial not an easy painting but yeah it's you can learn from it for sure so I'm adding this white face around the black pattern This cat has this nice tuxedo face, tuxedo face with a white nose and but otherwise it's it's black. White nose and white um, forehead. So I hope you you try it and and maybe you even post what your result and you like it. Um, I'm using for signature this um, ink uh, marker pen or whatever it's called, Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen, small size small, and adding whiskers too or very fine lines, and don't forget to remove your masking fluid, but only when your painting is, is dry. So I'm not doing this on a video because it's take uh, several hours or maybe even an overnight to dry and then you can remove the masking fluid. So as I said, I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed enough to go to Skillshare and try. If you do it, please use my referral link, which is 
which is um, pasted below the text of this YouTube video. And uh, I have already two other tutorial here in YouTube, two uh, cat tutorials. So I hope you try them and uh, see you uh, next uh, time and especially on Skillshare. And this is my result. Thanks so much.